finally this evening we are joined by naval architect and Vesta operator Stuart Ballantyne. Welcome to Spectator TV. Good evening, Alexandra. How are you? I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting there. Look, you have written an article for Flat White titled Puppet Masters of the ALP Union Communist Thugs and Militant Unions. Now, Stuart, there's a, at least one generation, perhaps two, who are running around Australia who have no memory of the union thuggery on the docks. For them, the idea that the delivery of goods could be interrupted and businesses around the nation thrown into chaos is completely unknown. The only wharf protesting they've seen or heard about were the Palestinians down there the other day waving flags around and a few of those green warriors who paddled out with their plastic canoes to protest oil or something random. Remind us, how bad can the unions get when it comes to shipping? Well, essentially, they, they destroyed the whole coastal shipping. And at the moment, the one of the things that can actually save our nation in terms of costs of uh, transporting goods, goods and taking the huge road issues cost, which is road deaths, road accidents, road emissions, road congestion, um, which amounts to 50 billion a year, according to Abstats, uh, really is a good, effective coastal shipping. But I went to sea a long time ago, and uh, as I said in that article, you know, I was called a scab <laughs> in my second year at sea by the Union uh, bosun of the ship that I was on over the side painting the ship, and uh, uh, I would be reported to the then secretary of the SUA, it used to be the Seamen's Union before it became the M MUA, the Maritime Union. And uh, we had 135, 136 ships at the time. And this is in the 60s. Now we're down to 11, and uh, which is a disgrace. So uh, as I've said repeatedly, really, we need to help this, uh, camp this country get off the, the transportation limits. We've become a trucking company and a trucking country. We've just been myopically focused on trucks. And uh, when you look at the road deaths, which is running at 1,300 a year, and serious accidents running at 18,000 a year, and when you cost it all up, as I say, it's uh, just a huge cost, but no one's willing to engage in that discussion because they're all actually scared of the unions. Well, as you were pointing out in your article, the unions aren't just about managing the docks, the wharves. They're quite interested in communism. Uh, you wrote in your article, and I quote, those shipmates told me stories of union bullying and standover tactics, which had been entrenched in the union since the pre-war 1930s. Even as a cadet for four years, I witnessed instances of snap strikes where this ship couldn't sail for some pitiful reason, such as an inferior brand of tomato sauce had been supplied. Now, Stuart, it doesn't sound a lot like the great union dream of protecting workers' rights and pays. Have things been better or worse since the union started taking control? Like, has shipping improved under the reign of the unions? Not at all. You would think that they would be driving initiatives, but even then in the 60s, 70s and 80s, they, they just continued to drive people out of business. Um, mm. And uh, at the moment, one of the great deterrent of that coastal shipping has is the presence of the unions because they, they're, uh, they just want their workers to work less for more pay. And that's, that's okay as an a, as a ideology, but in practice, it doesn't work. So we have uh, some of the coastal ships that are around at the moment with the Ukrainian crew being paid Australian wages. You think, well, why is that? Uh, they have to be paid Australian wages because of the award, but uh, some of the owners prefer to have Ukrainian crew because they actually work. Uh, the MUA is not interested in uh, productivity, I think is the word that uh, is passed around Canberra at the moment productivity. But every time the ALP gets in, it's uh, it's always the same. We want more money for uh, less work. Well, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the interesting things in your article that you said was this idea of equal pay where union members were demanding. They're asking questions like, why were you paid more than they were? And you said in your response, that's pretty simple. It's because you could do their job, but they couldn't do your job, which is uh, basically that an is argument. Correct. It's an argument from merit. And I know that offends a lot of people these days, but merit does matter. Now, you were young, uh, your young and naive mate went on to say, and I'm going to quote, 
Well, only until the Communist Party gets elected, then we'll all get paid the same and have job security. Tell us, why did that comment from your friend stay with you? Well, I thought he was delusional at the time. <laughs> I thought, well, you know, there's no way that if someone like me can go and study and get a certificate and get a rise up through the ranks. And then someone asked me a question, why am I getting paid less than you or you're getting paid more than me? I, it only took me half a, half a minute to come to that conclusion. Well, I, I said, I can do your job, but you can't do mine. That's why I should be paid more. Now, I've been several times to Russia. I've been in Venezuela. I've been in Cuba watching the, the actual life of the communism and everyone lives in the same types of flats. They're all in the same wages. Doesn't matter whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or a TV presenter or a plumber, you're all on the same wages. You drive the same car and uh, that's communism for you, uh, which I think is crazy. I've seen it for myself, so I think, wow, this is terrible. Yes, it doesn't sound like a very fun existence to be identical.